Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about Solus 4.5, an amazing distribution that's just dropped. And I want to talk about a few of the features. By the way, it's very late where I'm recording. Don't go by the clock because that's not the real time. It's in a virtual machine, but I'm not, I'm not going to be able to speak too loud. So without wasting further time, let's dive right in. Okay, so in front of me, I have a beautiful wallpaper. It's become kind of a meme for the channel, and I haven't installed the system yet, but we're gonna check out some of the new features, and I have a page ready with Firefox over here, so let's just see what 4.5 has to offer. But if you guys wanna have a brief look at how the budgie desktop environment looks like, okay, but before that, Actually, Solos 4.5 comes in a few flavors. So it comes in Budgie, it comes in Gnome, Plasma, and XFCE, which is beta for the time being, okay? So if you, if you don't know what kind of environment Budgie is, let me give you a very quick tour. There's gonna be timestamps to this video, so don't worry. If you wanna skip ahead to what's new, just do it right now. You have a taskbar at the bottom, an internet connection, uh, notifications, and by the way, uh, volume, power off, time. And the bar that you saw is actually called Raven, uh, the sidebar. It's very interesting. You have notifications, you get widgets, you get the calendar, you have uh, settings for displaying what apps are playing music. You can change your microphone levels, volume levels on a per app basis. So this is very fantastic. Start menu, very beautifully categorized. Two things which are really important uh, to Budgie are the Budgie Control Center and Budgie Desktop Settings. So the Budgie Control Center basically gives you things like uh, network, Bluetooth, background. Budgie is a derivative of GNOME, so you're going to find a lot of similarity between GNOME software settings and this beautiful boat for Solus. And you can see that we are running on Budgie 10.8.2, which is the latest Budgie version. and we do have Solus 4.5, which is named Resilience. We are on X11, not on Wayland yet, but at least the kernel version is latest. Now, this is not gonna be a very deep dive into Budgie. I, I've already made a video about Ultramarine Linux, which has the same Budgie 10.8. If you wanna uh, check out Budgie in details, go over to that video. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description box just below the like button so you're gonna know where to find it budgie desktop settings you have lots of things from setting the widgets icons cursors notification position you can have dark theme enabled which is enabled out of the box and you can enable disable animations inside desktop you can disable or enable desktop icons active mounts pretty standard stuff and i think they're very neatly categorized as fonts, text scaling, uh, style, desktop, and then comes Raven, which is the notification panel that I just showed you. And you can add or remove stuff. You can add widgets. <clears throat> Sorry, by the way, I have a really bad cold and I'm continuously coughing throughout the day. So I'm sorry, guys. You can set the Raven position as well. Uh, I think. Uh, this is the best position for Raven to be in, but you can change it if you want to. Windows, you get a ton of new settings, so you can attach modal dialogs to windows, you can change the button layout, you can center new windows on screen, <clears throat> which I don't really typically do, but it's an option if you want. And you can also edit the bottom panel, so you can move around things such as your uh, budgie menu, icon task list, and at the end you have system tray and whatever and other things. So you can also have something in the middle. So that would look cool too. If you want to, you could do that. And you have a ton of settings. Again, I have a video already. I'm not gonna waste time. Let's quickly dive into <clears throat> what's new this time around. So let's begin by checking out the installer, which is actually new. So they are using Calamaris, which is a highly respectable, uh, respected installer in the Linux community. So I'm not going to install the system, but let's just go through the steps. So American English, that works for me. Uh, there's my location. That's a dead giveaway, even though currently I'm not in Kolkata, uh, although that is my hometown. Uh, it's not a town, but whatever. Uh, so you can uh, erase disk. 
uh, which is the standard thing that you would want to do if you are on a fresh uh, drive. But if you know your way around, it is. I, I typically manually partition my space because I don't want to mess up my Windows install. But if you are only having Linux on your system, Erase Disk is the way to go. Next, you would uh, enter your name. Uh, this is my name. Again, putting your name on the internet, probably not that big of a, big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, Honor Bon Solus, that's a, that's a pretty name. Uh, you know, I have seen other <clears throat> installers and they just, uh, they, they put a huge name over here. This is what I like and I, I'm not gonna change it. I mean, even if it's a VM, so it doesn't really matter what it is in the end. But for people who are installing this, it would be pretty good. That's a, that's a name that I would keep. And we choose a very short password. Uh, a lot of people joke about having really long passwords in the virtual machines, but yeah, I'm tired of that joke right now. I used to do it. Now you have an overview, a summary, which is really good uh, before you actually hit the install icon or install button. So you can see you have the time zone, language, it automatically detects that I am in India. I generally prefer to stick to American English, but that's okay. I mean, you do you for every country you have the language is available. Not for every country, but majority at least, I would hope. And then keyboard is generic 105, the default, and the keyboard layout is American English by default. It also shows you the partitions. So <clears throat> after the system partitioning is done, you're gonna have a boot partition and a solace partition. And then if you click next, it will install the system and it would Finish. So that's, uh, we're not going to go ahead, we're just going to quit the installer and let's just, let's just go through some of the other things that are new this time around. So uh, there we go, we already talked about how it came with Calamaris and uh, some of the things that I missed is that it disables easier installation using file systems like ButterFS, which is a really good <clears throat> modern file system for Linux if you want to have uh, very, like good backups of your system. And so this is very good. And this is also a major, major step in migrating away from Python 2, which is the old installer. Now we get a ton of upgrades to the default applications. So Firefox 121, LibreOffice, I guess we could just go ahead and check the version number, right? I mean, it's not like we're gonna cross examine Firefox on their version number and it does seem to match. We also get LibreOffice 7.6.4.1, that's a mouthful. Uh, it should be under Office, and there we go, LibreOffice Writer. While that loads up, we also get Thunderbird 115.6.0. I typically uh, tend to avoid using email clients for whatever reason. I'm just more accustomed to using GNOME. Uh, I'm sorry, not GNOME, I meant Gmail, uh, right from the browser, so yeah. And I'm uh, not the biggest fan of this. I always tend to change it to elementary, but that's okay. You can change it as long as it's changeable, not that big of a deal. 7.6.4.1, huh, what a surprise. They were not lying. Okay, uh, guys, that was a joke, okay? Anyway, for audio and media playback, we offer software out of the box that caters specifically to our desired experience for each edition. So Budgie and Gnome editions ship with Rhythmbox, which is very standard. If you ever messed with Linux, you gotta have come across Rhythmbox. And with the latest release of the alternate toolbar extension to provide a more modern user experience. Budgie and GNOME ship with Celluloid for video playback and XFCE, which is in beta, ships with Parole and Plasma Desktop ships with Elisa for audio playback and Haruna for video playback. Pretty good software. And one of the better things is it does replace Pulse Audio and Jack. So uh, if you wanna know how to have Pipewire, uh, noise cancellation. I recently made a video. I'm, I'm going to be linking it in the description as well. So if you want to know about that, just check it out. And by the way, if you don't know what Pipewire or Pulse Audio are, they're basically audio servers, software that manages your audio. This one's older. It's going to go out and Pipewire is here to stay. This is the version, the, the audio server for the future. That's all you need to know. You also have RCM support. Not really sure what that is but apparently this provides GPU acceleration for applications like Blender and <clears throat> enables hardware accelerated machine learning with support for PyTorch, Llama, Stable Diffusion, and many other AI software and tools. Okay, and uh, we have done additional work to extend the compatibility with as much hardware as possible, including some not officially supported by AMD. So that's pretty good. 
Now, <clears throat> this is something which uh, Ubuntu does. It actually, it, it, it's called HWE or hardware enablement, I believe. That's the, that's the full form. So they do bring you the latest kernel, which is 6.6.9. I'm not really sure if that's 6.7, which is the latest, but 6.6.9 is a very recent kernel. So you have nothing to worry about, especially because you are getting 23.3.2 when it comes to Mesa. Mesa, if you didn't know what that is, is your open source graphics driver. Basically, this is what will be used when you're gaming with uh, AMD or an Intel graphics card. <clears throat> so you would always wanna have the latest Mesa version for them to be working at their fullest potential. So with that out of the way, it like Mesa 23.3.2 has a bunch of uh, improvements. So you're going to get that because you have the system. Now, while we're at it, let's just go over to the terminal because I always like to open terminal and doing you name a is kind of a ritual, I guess, for Linux YouTubers. So this is 6.6.9. We are running that. And by the way, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and uh, just, just do top. I like to see how much RAM is being used. So around 1100 megabytes so 1.1 gigabytes of ram is being used let's just keep it over here and uh we're gonna go through the other areas so uh you can you can keep track of how much ram is being utilized over a session so that's something which uh if you have an older computer you can get a pretty good idea about how much ram it's gonna actually use by the way i have given it seven gigabytes of ram so uh it do, so what your ram usage is uh when you're not doing a ton will depend on how much RAM you have allocated. It's like spreading your legs and sitting comfortably. So like I said, Budgie comes with 10.8.2, uh, which is the latest version. And uh, Budgie Desktop has received a ton of improvements and they are laying the groundwork for Wayland support, which is really good. See, X11, it's, it's kind of going out the window right now, but a lot of distributions have shifted over to Wayland. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys, um, uh, my coughing is really bad. <laughs> You have dark style preference support, uh, dark style theme, the dark theme toggle in Budgie settings now also sets the dark theme preference. So that would be the button that I showed you earlier for applications as well. So if, unless there is an application that specifically overrides the, the, the color theme that you have set, for example, let's just say your windows is in light mode, but Photoshop always is in kind of like a dark mode. Or Premiere Pro is in an eternal state of dark modeness. So if some applications have a specific color scheme, they're not good. They're going to reject whatever settings you have applied. But other than that, the other applications, they are also going to follow the dark theme that you set from the settings. So that's something which is pretty good. You have the Budgie Trash Applet. So this is developed by buddies of Budgie and Solo's team member. Uh, Evan Matic and is now part of the default applets available on all Budgie installations. You also have big quality of life improvements, including system tray icons can optionally scale with panel size. That is really good. <clears throat> Guys, I'm, I am at 1080p running on a 15.6 uh, inch screen. And some of these elements, I find them to be a, a tad small. Uh, this is because it's running at a 100% scaling, but Windows, I use it at a 125% scaling. But Linux, I found, I, I, I really find that it just blows up things to a certain level that I don't really like. Now with KDE Plasma 6, I think they are going, they have introduced a fractional scaling very uh, grand, on a very granular level. So I would really like to test that out, but for some reason KDE Plasma just doesn't want to run on my virtual machine and everything just goes black. Anyway. That's uh, I, I digress, but let's just come back. Notification system improvements, including slightly decreased memory usage. I think uh, we can all say that yes, memory is not that high. I remember I was using XFCE and that was around a 1.23, 1.25 gigabytes. So this is really good. This is better. And by the way, this is with Firefox open. That was without having anything open on XFCE. It's not that light. Uh, I mean, XFCE isn't that light, and honestly, it doesn't look that amazing, uh, to be very frank. And Budgie is doing a great job. It's based on GNOME, or GNOME, however you say it, and 1.1 gigs, I'm comfortable with it. System tray icons uh, receive improvements around inconsistent stas status notifier item implementations. 
that's pretty good. And keyword support is now supported in fuzzy searching and buzzy menu. So search terms like browser or editor should return better results. Let's just say word. And you can see if I type word, it gives me LibreOffice writer, which is the thing that I'm actually looking for. And you also have a battery indicator in the status applet. Unfortunately, you're not gonna see it because this is inside a virtual machine. It doesn't work that way. And you also have uh, a ton of changes in GNOME. So it's using GNOME 45.2. Uh, for those of you who love GNOME, I do. And so now you may have heard about Impatience, which speeds up the animations. That's getting replaced by Speedinator. The default GTK theme is also now set to ADW GTK3 Dark. What that does is it provides a uniform look for the GTK3 and for applications based on Libid Vita, because that's what's new. And new windows are also centered by default. I know I just said I'm not, not the biggest fan of that, but yeah, it's okay. I mean, you can always just drag it around if you really wanted to. You also have timeout for the application not responding prompt increased to 10 seconds. You have a bunch of bug fixes, which are again, related to GNOME, not really uh, having anything to do with Solus in particular. And also you get Plasma, which is really good. Uh, Plasma six is supposed to come out on February. So I'm going to make a video about that. Just, just wait and watch. And here we also have XFCE. If you like XFCE, there you have it. And okay, so they did announce their decision to deprecate the Mate edition in favor of an XFCE edition. Okay, XFCE edition aims to fill the same niche as the Mate edition, users who prefer a more lightweight desktop experience. And what about the future? Okay. So we're still working on a seamless transition for existing Mate desktop users in broad terms. We, we will provide a way for users to transition their Mate installations to Budgie or XFCE. That's, and they will continue to support the existing users. So that is pretty good. Also, let's, uh, let's go through some of the wallpapers because I just realized we haven't done that. Hmm. These are really good backgrounds. Very interesting. The most difficult task of creating a new video is just picking a, a suitable wallpaper so that it fits well with the thumbnail of the video. Uh, contrast and stuff, clickability, you know, the boring stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with this. I like this wallpaper a lot. And with that, we come to the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as you can see, it's already very late in the night. And thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.